Once upon a time, there was a thrill of riding bikes to the corner drugstore, buying packs of wax, and ripping them open in the parking lot. Children were constantly on the hunt for the Donruss Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card, and despite buying a hundred or more packs, the case would end up fruitless. Collectors from the past will often share memories of how sports cards were a staple of their childhood. Whether it was Mickey Mantle's rookie card, or a Wayne Gretzky with a stale piece of bubblegum stuck to it, the cards bring back memories. But 21st century kids have other things on their mind. During the first three years of the 1990s, when the baseball trading card industry was at its hottest, it generated more than $1 billion annually. By 2017, that number fell to a chilly $200 million. And we just didn't, we didn't treat the cards with the respect they do nowadays. We used to throw them against walls to play closies to see who won all the cards. Robert Sumner previously owned a sports card shop. He enjoyed many successful years selling sports cards to people of all ages. But there was one thing that stood out behind his decision to close his shop doors more than five years ago. Has eBay changed the game? Has it changed it for, for the better or, or for the worse? For the worst, they killed the local hobby stores because it was so, it's so cheap to buy it on eBay, and because it's a more competitive market, that drives the price down when there's more people selling. Not if there's only a couple of people that I can buy from in Windsor, then I spend decent prices and keep the hobby stores going because then they can afford to buy the boxes of cards, which, like I said, because of the materials in the cards have gone up in price, so it's made it very, very hard to keep the cost down. The cost is just high. It's very high. Much like Sumner, Jeremy Reynolds first started collecting as a kid. He would often spend his Canadian summers playing road hockey and admiring the many great players of his era, such as Wayne Gretzky and Bobby Orr. But back in the day, we might we might have breakfast, but what we do is we get out our homemade nets, we get our sticks, we go either down the street or in our own driveway, we'd play with people and we'd just play all day. And we'd play all night. And then we might eat, and then we might scrounge for money and we might go to the corner store and buy cards, all right? And it was just that our passion for the sport and our love for hockey just kept going and going. And to us, um, you know, collecting was fantastic. As with many non-digital commercial trends, card collecting started to wane around the 90s. That decade's cards aren't worth much today, largely due to card companies overprinting. When demand for cards increased during that time, so did supply. But as supply increased to unthinkable levels and demand started to fall, the bottom fell out of the market. The chase for Ken Griffey Jr. rookie cards no longer brought a big enough thrill to go to the stores. Thus, the value of cards dropped, and kids were now left with boxes of cards. Mothers then shoved these cards into big cardboard boxes, where they'd sit and gather dust for the next 25 years. This is known as the junk wax era, an era the sports card industry is still trying to overcome. But why is it that the price of cards are currently skyrocketing? Many say this is largely due to the popularity of players. Whether it be the latest Chicago Bulls documentary highlighting the legacy of Michael Jordan, or any other sporting event, players are constantly in the spotlight. Sport card collectors can now pull game-worn jersey cards, autographs, and much more from almost any given pack. Long gone are the days where sports cards are thrown against walls, or stuck in the wheels of bicycles to sound cool. Today's cards are commodities to buy, sell, and trade, and prices prove it. This one is $500. This is a Vladimir Guerrero Jr., a player that came into the league last year. Frank Safu will be celebrating his first year as card shop owner at the end of April. He's been collecting, trading, and selling sports cards for more than 25 years. From the junk wax days to pulling cards as rare as $6,000, Safu has seen it all. He believes because of the wide range of products available, kids will continue to collect. In fact, he believes they will save the hobby. When I see kids walk in here, and I don't mean anything wrong by it, I pay more attention to what they want, what they ask. I make sure I answer, I answer every question. Because not only as a collector, I like to see my hobby grow and survive, but as a store owner, this is the customer of the future. Jeremy Reynolds' love and passion for the hobby has led him to an interesting role, a role where he can now have a direct impact on growing the sports card hobby, something he claims is important for its survival. He has recently been named the general manager of Canada's largest sports memorabilia and trading card expo. Among his long list of duties, Renault is in constant communication with some of the hobby's biggest manufacturers. And much like Safu and Sumner, Renault also believes the importance of getting kids into the hobby.
say if my dad actually had a raw bobby ore and it was beat up but my dad got it and he gave it to me and i gave it to my son and that was a generation that passed down um you know i'd rather my son appreciate the industry that way than to get into it knowing right away you know cards are based on value and perceived value ironically the same internet may also save the card industry information on cards is now available within seconds and collectors can purchase cards from all around the globe. Every day, collectors from the past are rediscovering the hobby. People are exploring their basements and attics and hoping to find lost treasure. And whether or not they come up empty-handed, one thing is for sure. There's still a future in the cards.